Welcome to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. Get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and connected to the miraculous energy of unconditional love that I call Mother Mary. If you're a highly sensitive, highly creative entrepreneur or light worker, and you want to magnify your impact and your intuition, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Reverend Francis Faden, interfaith minister, intuitive coach, and author of Meditation is Friendship with God. I can't wait to share miraculous stories, books, meditations, messages, and interviews with other miraculous light workers just like you. Are you ready to magnify your miracles? What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I am so grateful that we get to spend this time together helping you to magnify your miracles. Today is the third installment of our four-part series that we're doing on manifesting. So we talked a lot in the previous two weeks about different aspects of manifesting, and I promised you that I would be sharing a really awesome book that will really expand your manifesting ability. Before we get into that, let's take a few deep breaths together. Just get ourselves grounded and centered. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out anything that you no longer need. As we start to feel body, mind, and spirit aligning, coming into this moment, knowing that whatever it is that you need to hear to help you magnify your miracles is exactly what you're going to be hearing. Let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude, and we can begin. All right, my friend. Well, welcome once again. And if you are a longtime listener of the podcast, you will know that I have recommended many, many books over all these episodes that can definitely help you with law of attraction, definitely help you with manifesting. Um, I talked in the first previous episodes in the last couple of weeks about the difference between magnifying and manifesting and how there really are cousins to each other. But the book I'm going to share with you today I think is one of the best books for manifestation to really understand how it works, for you to consciously work with it, some easy things that you can do, and how you as a highly sensitive person, as you as for you as somebody who feels things deeply, actually has an edge over everybody else when it comes to manifesting. Because this book is called Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. Now, if you're not familiar with Neville Goddard, Neville, sometimes people just call him Neville. He is an amazing author who has written many, many, many books on how manifestation works. And in fact, the book that I'm going to be sharing with you today is the book that Wayne Dyer, the late Wayne Dyer, used as his inspiration for, I think, his last book. I think his last book was called Wishes Fulfilled. I think that's the book. And that whole premise of Wishes Fulfilled was based on what he learned from studying Neville Goddard's teachings, specifically this book, Feeling is the Secret. So a lot of what he'll share in all of the books that he has, and if you really want to go deep, there is a book that's called The Neville Goddard Reader, And it has, I think it's a collection of all of his books. This particular one, Feeling is the Secret, I'm going to have a link to it in uh, in the show notes where you can access it, find it really quickly. And there is even a YouTube video that I found that's simply just someone reading the book. They back just have the page open and they're reading it, which is so great if you want to just listen to it in the background when you're making dinner or whatever it might be. That's That's a free resource for you. This book I'm sharing with you, I don't know, you can get it for like 99 cents or something like that. And believe me, it is worth its weight in gold once you learn how to apply it. So I'm going to read some of this book to you. There's only four chapters in the book. It's a very uh, concise book. It's not very long, but let me tell you, these are the four 
Chapter is the law and its operation. Chapter two is sleep. Chapter three is prayer. And chapter four is spirit and feeling. And you know, for me, Mother Mary always talks to me through the number four. So I know when I picked up this book, I was like, oh, this is a book that I need to uh, definitely pay attention to. So I'm going to be reading to you some from each of these chapters. They're not very long and uh, really, really powerful. So here's the foreword. The foreword says, this book is concerned with the art of realizing your desire. What you and I, my friend, call manifestation, right? It gives you an account of the mechanism used in the production of the visible world. It is a small book, but but not slight. There is a treasure in it, a clearly defined road to the realization of your dreams. And he says, the world and all within it is man's condition, consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. Knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all you desire in life. Armed with working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. Control of the subconscious mind. Now, now, this is just me talking now. We've talked about this. Remember, we talked about the subconscious mind last week. We talked about how everything that's in your life, everything that you can see is as if your life is a garden, right? And so if you go out to your garden and you see a bunch of sunflowers, you know that you must have planted seeds that produce that particular plant called the sunflower. If you go in your garden and you see a bunch of weeds, then you know that under the soil, there's a bunch of things planted that you did not want on a conscious level, but they're there in the subconscious. So this book, he's talking about how do you actually become a conscious mind farmer? How do you do that? How do you consciously go into your subconscious mind and plant the seeds of the things that you're wanting? So I'm using the analogy of sunflowers because sunflowers are my favorite flower. But let's say what you're wanting to experience in your life, you know, your version of sunflowers is happy relationships or vibrant health or more than enough money, or freedom to travel and do what you want, like whatever it is. Those are the results. Those are the things that are going to grow. What are the seeds that you need to plant? What are those thoughts that you need and beliefs that you need to plant? And how do you do it? That's why I'm sharing this book with you, because this book is about how you do it. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction, it contemplates a feeling as a fact. I want you to write that down. The subconscious mind contemplates a feeling as a fact existing within itself, and on this assumption proceeds to give expression to it. The creative process begins with an idea, and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a desire to act. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. And you and I, as highly sensitive people, we know how to have feelings. We know how to feel things very, very deeply, right? He goes on to say, no idea can be impressed on the subconscious until it is felt. But once it felt, be good or bad or indifferent, it must be expressed. Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, you do not control your, therefore, the person who does not control his feelings may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states, which is what we were just talking about. By control of feeling, it is not meant restraint or suppression of feelings. And this is really important. We're not suppressing our feelings, but rather the disciplining of the self to imagine and entertain only in such a feeling as contributes to your happiness. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself or others. To do so is to impress the subconscious mind with these limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. Okay, and this is really important. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, it must be expressed. 
the dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. Now, the reason that I want to emphasize this to you is because you're going to have feelings all day long. We all do, right? It's the dominant feeling. Okay. So this is why if you're trying to do an affirmation like, I am successful, I am successful, but your dominant feeling is I am a loser, then your dominant feeling is the one. This is why we have to actually practice being in these higher vibrations. Again, my friends, this is why I'm doing these divine love activations to put you in feeling states over and over again that are higher and become dominant rather than your other everyday feeling that you're used to, which is not the energy of unconditional love. So he says, I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. So I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. To feel I will be is to say that I am currently not. I am is stronger than I am not. What you feel you are always dominates what you feel you would like to be. Therefore, to be realized, the wish must be felt as a state that is that is rather than a state that is not. Okay, and this is something that I also teach people about listening to your body. He says, your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotion, are the cause of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of dis-ease in both body and environment. Do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. Think feelingly only of the state that you desire to realize. Feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. Now write this down. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. Now, have you noticed that? Like you can be having a feeling and then all of a sudden you like, you do something that shifts. Maybe you do your prayer practice. Maybe you talk to a therapist. Maybe you do something to change your energy, whatever it might be. And your feeling changes. And the next thing you know, you start having different experiences. And, and, and so hang on, because I'm going to be telling you what he says in here, like the easy, easy way to start working with this truth. He says the subconscious not is not concerned with truth or falsity of your feeling. It always accepts as true that which you feel to be true. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify. So this is why I always start all of my podcasts and I always start everything I do with having people imagine that they're receiving what they need to receive. And then guess what happens? They do. They do. Here he goes on. The subconscious is the womb of creation. It receives the idea unto itself through the feelings of a person. And it never changes the idea received, but always gives it form. Hence, the subconscious outpictures the idea in the image and likeness of the feeling received. To feel a state as hopeless or impossible is to impress the conscious subconscious with the idea of failure. All right, so I'm going to go on here. Last part of this chapter. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. For only through feeling is an idea subconsciously accepted and only through this subconscious acceptance is it ever expressed. So this, let me tell you what this means, my friends. This means that you can have a lot of, you know, you can have a lot of feelings. You can have a lot of thoughts going on, you know. You can even have some fears going on like, oh, you know, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that. It is not until you assume the feeling. So maybe you're afraid of uh, something happening. But if you get into that energy of like, oh, this is the reality. That's why people have to be really careful when they talk to doctors or whatever it is. Because if you accept the reality of like, this is the way it is. I am this way. And you assume that feeling completely. Your subconscious mind says, okay, I guess that's what's going to be true. Even if it's not true. I have seen stories of people who were given a wrong diagnosis. They were saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. Um, you know, whatever you have, there's no cure for it. Go home. Um, you only have a week to live. And that person goes home and follows those directions and is, is dead in a week. And then two weeks later, the, you know, the 
the hospital calls and says, oh, I'm sorry, we got your file mixed up with somebody else. You actually have a clean bill of health. Well, too bad. Mr. Smith is gone, right? Because Mr. Smith's mind accepted that as truth. Now, that's obviously a very extreme example. This is why you want to be very careful. This is why I never watch regular television because I do not want to be flooded with all those pharmaceutical commercials trying to get into my mind and telling me I have all these things wrong with me. Uh, I don't watch it. And if it ever does come on, I mute it because I'm like, cancel. Nope, not for me. And this is a technique that you can do. If let's say you're around somebody of a family member or a friend who complains about something, they're complaining about money, they're complaining about the economy, they're complaining about health, and they're saying, oh, how bad it is when you get to a certain age, X, Y, Z is going to happen, right? I hear this all the time. This is what I do because my conscious mind is still in charge. When somebody says to me, well, you know, as soon as you're over this age, this is going to happen in my mind. I say, cancel, not true for me. And what that does is it stops that information from going down into my subconscious mind. Cancel, not true for me. I once went to an eye doctor when I was 39 and he said to me, oh, as soon as you turn 40, you know, something's got, something not good is going to happen with your eyes. And I, I looked at him because I see he was so emphatic about it. And I said, cancel, that's not going to be true for me. And you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't true for me at all. So that's a tool that you can use to just Stay in your mind, cancel, cancel, not true for me, not true for me. That keeps your conscious mind from accepting any any negativity that you don't want to get in there. All right, so now the next chapter, really important, is sleep. Okay, let me find out where it is. Whatever you have in consciousness as you go to sleep is the measure of your expression in the waking two-thirds of your life. So he says, because all things come from within yourself, your conception of yourself determines that which comes. You should always feel the wish fulfilled before you drop off to sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to have or be before you drop off to sleep. So this is what Wayne Dyer teaches from this book is, I want you to start asking yourself this question to really up your manifesting ability. As you're getting in bed and you're laying down and you're not asleep yet, ask yourself the question. I actually have it as a sticky note on my bed, my nightstand that says, now that all of my wishes are fulfilled, how do I feel? And so I let myself go to bed imagining all my wishes fulfilled and not just thinking about them. I'm not thinking about, you know, what my business is going to look like or any of that. I'm thinking about the feeling. I'm letting myself feel what it's like to have a business that is blessing people all over the world. I'm letting myself feel what it's like to have a completely healthy body. I'm letting myself feel the amount of money that um, is in my bank account that is, you know, the fulfillment of my wish, whatever that might be. And so what am I feeling when I'm falling asleep? I'm feeling peaceful. I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling the sense of accomplishment and expansion. And I'm feeling like, ah, this is my life now. So I'm falling asleep in the emotion, in the feeling of this is my life now. This, my friend, is such a powerful thing. Sometimes it could be hard to do this in the daytime when we're dealing with our life. But if we can do this when we're getting ready to fall asleep, it's so much easier. So he says, you must be in the consciousness or being or having that which you want to be or have before you drop off to sleep. Once you're asleep, you have no freedom of choice. Your entire slumber is dominated by the last waking concept of yourself. It follows, therefore, that you should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before you retire into sleep. And then he quotes scripture and says, come before me with singing and thanksgiving Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Your mood prior to sleep defines your state of consciousness as you enter into the present of your everlasting lover, the subconscious. She sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. If, as you prepare for sleep, you assume and maintain the consciousness of success by feeling, I am successful, you must be successful. Lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body and feel as you would 
where you in possession of your wish and quietly relax into sleep. Night after night, you should assume the feeling of being, having, and witnessing that which you seek to be, possess, and see manifested. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. So he talks about this. I'm going to not read this whole book to you because I totally could. Um, <laughs> see here. Dropping off, this is the end of this chapter, dropping off to sleep, feeling satisfied and happy compels conditions and events to appear in your world, which confirm these attitudes of mind. What you take in as a feeling, you bring out as a condition, an action, or an object in space. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, as in consciousness, so on earth. And then, my friend, he talks about prayer in the same way. He says that prayer is a lot like going into that sleep vibration, that altered state. He says, prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. The only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds the means for its realization. To pray successfully, then, you must yield to the wish that is the feel the wish fulfilled. And he goes on and says, prayer is the art of yielding to the wish and not forcing of a wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself. Prayer must be without effort. In attempting to fix an attitude of mind which is denied by the senses, effort will be fatal. All you can possibly need or desire is already yours. How many times do I say that? You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. And then the last chapter, he's talking about what is spirit and... How can you do the works similar to what Jesus did? Because Jesus knew his oneness with spirit. So that, my friends, is the book I'm recommending for you for your manifestation journey. Healing is the Secret by Neville Goddard. Um, This is a book that I read and I read it again and I read it again because it's so deep and it's so true. And it really gives you the most simple an easy to apply way to work with your subconscious mind. So be a mind gardener, my friend. Really learn how to work with your mind, how to plant those seeds, how to plant those beliefs. Assume the feeling of whatever it might be. I am successful. I am healthy. I am loved. I am whatever it is that you want it to be. Assume that feeling now. Let yourself fall asleep feeling that way and watch the miracles unfold. I would love to hear if this resonates with you. Have you ever tried it? Has it worked for you? Is there anything else that you do? Remember that that time when you're falling asleep is very, very precious. So be, be very, um, be a good steward of it is what I want to say. Be a good steward of that time. Let yourself fall asleep feeling as great as you possibly can and letting your subconscious mind know that that is the dominant energy. That's the energy that you're really ready to embody as you are moving into the next day. If you enjoyed this, I would love for you to share it with your friends, your family, share it on social media, whatever works for you. I am putting a link to the book in the show notes and you can go to francisfaden.com forward slash podcast. You'll see the episode there. Click on that and you will find the link to the book. Um, I'll also put the link to the video episode that you can watch on YouTube for free as well. And it goes into the whole detail. All right, my friends. So remember, the key to mag- magnifying your miracles is really knowing your miracle is already here. God bless you, my friends. And we'll see you next week for session number four to complete our series. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm so grateful to be able to spend this time with you. If you want even more inspiration, feel free to visit my website, francisfaden.com or magnifyyourmiracles.com. And if you did enjoy this episode, I would really appreciate it if you left a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you connect with awesome podcasts. Remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is remembering that your miracle is already here.